Good morning, whatever about I. We're continuing on Masakh Brachot, and we are on Daf Lamitet Amud Aleph 39a, seven lines from where the lines widen the bottom and the limud of Amud Yomi. This week has been sponsored by. Aaron and Miriam Zaguri, Hidui Nishmat, Hidit. But Miriam, and also by our own very Maya Zagari, Hidui Nishmat, his father, Rachamim Ben Yosef Moshe, I believe the name was, I don't have it in front of me, that his Neshama should have. And Aliyah, amen. amen. So <clears throat> the Gemara says, we, we started discussing this yesterday of the bracha that we make on soups that are vegetable soup. You cook vegetable in, um, in the pot and you're only having, you don't have a immersion blender, you're just having the soup of it and the Gemara says, in the name of Rav, Rav Papa, Amar Rav Papa, Pshitali, it's Pashut to me, Maya de Silka ke Silka. If you are cooking beets and you're having the juice, <clears throat> the bracha is going to be the same bracha that you make on Selek, on beets. Maya de Lifta ke Lifta. Same thing would be with turnips that we, we discussed yesterday on raw turnips, if you cut them um, or dice them, would, would it make a difference in bracha? Would it not make if it's big, if it's small pieces? Here is when you cook it, but you're drinking just the water of the, the turnip soup. Papa says you make a bore priyadama just like you would make on the turnips themselves. And not only that, by, but Maya de Kulehu Shalki, Kekulhu Shalki. Any of the shlakot, any of the cooked vegetables, when you're having the water, you say the same bracha that you would have said on the vegetables themselves. So, of course, this creates a large problem because we had before a, an entire discussion of fruit juices that aside from Shemen Zayit, olive oil, which is also a fruit juice, and Yayin, which is grape juice, you say Shakol on the rest of the juices. So how is it exactly reconcilable with this, that you're not even juicing, so to speak, the thing itself, you're just cooking it in water, and the water becomes this is something that everybody is busy with um, from the time of Rishonim already, the Rashba and others, all the way down to the halakha is something that needs a lot of um, reconciliation, which is beyond the scope of this talk. So it says the Gemara, by Rapapa, Rapapa asked, same Rapapa, Maya the Shifta, how about dill juice, right? If you have um, dill in your, in, your, in your dish, so to speak, in your, in your cooking, process, the water of that, when you cook, is that going to be also hadama, or is that going to be not hadama? What's the difference? Because these do not eat dill. So when you put dill inside, it's questionable, are you putting it in for taste? Or are you putting it in to take away from the zuhama, from the, the negative taste that would, would have existed in the dish, in the pot that you're cooking, if the dill was not there, which would make it that now it's not for taste itself, you're not going to make hadama, right? If you like, you know, the, the taste, the sweet taste of beets, so then when you cook be beets, the water becomes that same taste, ah, hadama. You can understand that. But if dill was not so good by itself, you're only putting it in to take away, to mask, other things you don't want to be, you know, tangibly felt inside of the soup, then the importance of the bracha is not a dill. 
So it says the Gemara, which one is it? Maya the shifta, my the matuka ta'amavdi. Is it coming to add some taste to sweeten the the taste, or la avure zuhama avdi, or is it coming to mask the other things that are there? So it says the Gemara, Tashma, have a raya from um, Mishnah in Trumot. Says so Hashavet Mishnah not ta'am bekidera. The way Rashi understands this Gemara is so very simple. You see, you see from the Mishnah the not not ta'am bekidera that the shevet, the dill, is giving tam to the to the to the pot, and from the moment that he gives tam to the pot, then it changes some of the halachot of hafrashat shuma. So it says the gemara. You see from there that it's actually coming to give taste to the kedera, and hence would follow the same halacha of shlakot um, that we mentioned before. It says the gemara. Says, from here you see the is coming to actually add and give some taste, first white line, and therefore will be hadama shmamina. Gemara conquers it has to be um, hadama. Okay, says the Gemara Marafia Bar Ashi Patsnuma Bekara Mevarechale Amotzi. If you have patsnuma, snuma means like rock. There's rock hard. You have pieces of bread, perhaps left over, and they have become so hard that now they're not edible. You want to soak them in the soup and you want to eat them. So what bracha do you make? Now they're softened, right? They're coming apart a little bit. What bracha do you make them? So says the Gemara, the said, Rav Chiyavar Ashi said, "Patznu ma bekara mevarech mevarchin ale hamotzi." You make hamotzi on them. Upliga the Rav Chiyavar, the Amar Rav and this is this Rav Chiyavar Ashi is in argument with Rabbi the Rabbi Chiyavar. The Rabbi Chiyavar holds, "Sarich shetichle bracha im apat." Now, when you make hamotzi, it has to be that you piece the bread. You take off the chala, as you say, and you finish by cutting the bread and then you eat. So when you have a little piece of sinuma, a little piece of dried bread, you're not piecing anything, right? So therefore, says Rabbi Chia, says the Gemara based on Rabbi Chia, you can't make hamotzi on it because you're not bosea, you're not taking a piece from. The bread. Now, this is the Tosafot. This is the, the way Rashi understands the Gemara. If you take a look at the last Tosafot, they have a lot of problem with this because we learned before, right, that if you have, um, let's say, chabitza, you have little pieces of bread that, that would be made made in different dishes, you make hamotzi on it. So what's the difference between snuma? And the other halachot that we learned by, by Chabitza in the Flamet Zayin, we had <clears throat> examples of this as well, that if it's kazayit, you make hamotzi. If it's not kazayit, you don't make hamotzi. Right? You remember all those things. So the Safot disagrees with this understanding of the Gemara because it comes out of a very big hidush, according to, according to Rashi, that according to Rabbi Chia, you would only make hamotzi on like a nice, big loaf of bread. But if you have pieces, you would never end up making a mozi, which is very surprising. So the Safot has a, an entire different, different pshat. So you have a, an entire bread in front of you, your bosea from the tsnuma. He has a whole different, more complicated pshat in the Gemara. But nevertheless, the reason Gemara brings this is for a broader machloket. We had Rabbi Chia over here that you only make hamotzi as you're cutting the bread off, right? The way we do it, how do we do it? You say hamotzi, you're not touching the bread until, well, you're touching it, but you're not cutting it until you finish the bracha. Go to Rabbi Chia, you're cutting it as you say the bracha and you finish piecing it off 
the chala as your bracha finishes, right? So that is machlok. It says the Gemara. Sarich she tichle bracha imapat. The bracha has to finish with the cutting of the, the bread. Matkif la rova. Rova asks the question. What's the reason that Snuma you're saying you don't make Hamotzi on it? Because when you finish, when you would, would finish saying Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz, you're already saying the Bracha on a piece of bread, on a Snuma, on a little piece of bread, not on a whole bread that you are taking off of it. So it says the Gemara. According to you, according to Rabbi Chia, same problem is with you, with you saying on a massive piece of chala, right? When you are already finishing the bracha, the, the chala that you're going to be eating, the piece is a small piece. So what's the difference? What did you gain exactly by this? It says the Gemara, What's the chashivut otherwise? You know, Rashi says, Ma chashivut, my chashivuta, umai ahanita. What's the difference? What did you gain by saying the bracha on a big piece of chala when the piece that you're eating, when the bracha finishes, you say, the piece, the little piece that you're eating, right? So it says the Mara, therefore, Elam, Amar Rava. Rava disagrees fundamentally with this Rabkhiya. Rava says, no, that's not how you say Hamotzi. You take the hala in your hand and you say Hamotzi lechemin aras before you touch it, before you start cutting it. You finish your bracha and only afterwards your boseya, you take a piece off, right? Nahardai avdi kerabichia, in Naharda, in the city of Naharda, they did like Rabichia, that they would start the cutting process. As they said the bracha, this of course minimizes the weight in the middle, right? There's no weight process. After you, immediately when you say, I'm going to you, put it in your mouth. There's no, you know, the time that it takes for you to cut is not there. The Ashkenazim have a minhag, which is also questionable. If you take a look, they, in some of the families still they do it. They start the cutting process, right? Before Hamotzi, they make one thing now. Nowadays, they make a little um, Roshim. If you go to Europe, you'll see the Hasidim there, the Minhagis, they actually make a little cut inside the Hala. And then when they say Hamotzi, then they, they, they cut through it, right? So then the Kafachayim talks about this, whether or not this is a proper thing, or maybe. You shouldn't be doing this because it, it takes away a little bit from the ma'alach of the, the bread being shalem, being complete. You need lechem mishneh, you need a complete bread, as we're going to discuss mamash today. So maybe um, it's not the proper thing. Certainly it has not been our minhag. Now, uh, one funny observation is sometimes, you, you, you know, sometimes you see the, the person is looking for the cut that they made before hamotzi, for five minutes, they're trying to find where it was the, the thing and put and, and cut it right there. Uh, you know, if if they wouldn't make the roshim, they would just go through it and cut it. Sometimes that that few extra seconds you you lose by trying to put the knife exactly in where you started, and 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 so on. Again, depends on 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 the on the person and depends on the, what their minhag has been. So someone that has had that minhag certainly they would. Continue their minhag. Minhag Israel are important, and again, this is to minimize the time. So that's Rabbi Chia, and in the Harda, the minhag was like Rabbi Chia. But says the Gemara, Rabbanan Abdi Karava. Rabbanan would do like Rava that they would not start the, the process of bitziata path of cutting it, cutting the piece until the bracha was finished. Says the Gemara. Amar Ravina, Ravina and Ravashi, right? That they, they wrote the Gemara. Ravina apparently never saw, never remembered his father, right? He became a Yatom, at a very young age. 
So Ravina said, Amra li em, my mother told me, Avuch avit kerbichia. Your father, his minhag was like kerbichia. The Amar Rabichia said, it should take the bracha in my pot. The Rabichia held, you should finish your bracha with finishing the cutting off of the piece of bread. Rabbanan avdi kerava. Rabbanan would do like rava. Hilchata what's that? Ha? Says the Gemara. Hilchata kerava. Alacha is like Rava, the Amar, Mevarech, the Acharkach, Botseya. That you first finish the Bracha, and only then you take a piece off it, and we're not concerned about the weight. So says the Gemara, Itmar. So this is the Halacha, why? What's the other Shukot? The Gemara says the Halacha, it's the Halacha, it's the Halacha. How do you come up with other Min Hazim, 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 it says very clearly this is not a halacha. No, because you're not doing anything during the time of the, the you say bracha. You're just starting it off without damaging the bread from being shalem. Then you say the bracha. This way you are, well, according to everybody, the halacha is, let's imagine, um, I, I was, I never forget, I was, uh, as a child, I was taken to a, um, to a shiva house. <clears throat> And uh, the, the Minagis, they have different brachot there, they do in the Shema and the Askara. So they had some eggs, the, you have eggs, it's machala bedim, and so on. And this guy takes a whole egg, a hard, hard boiled egg, says Shakol Niyabit Vara, and starts peeling it off. Uh-huh. I don't know, for some reason, he made a Roshim. I mean, I was like, I'm at it. Like, first peel it off. You don't want to eat the peels. So it's a, Peel it off, get it ready. You want to put salt on it, put salt on it. Then you say the bracha. And that's a halakha to everyone. If you want to have cucumbers, you want to have something that needs An salt on top of it. Peel it, right? right? First peel it, put salt on it. Get it ready. You want to minimize the weight between the bracha and the actual eating, right? But isn't this, isn't this similar to like uh, lighting the, can- the, the Shabbat candle, just the, the wick, so that when it's lit by your wife, it'll be easily... Easier to light. And therefore? So, so the whole point is you make the cut free so that when you, when you make the cut... Right, but there free, you don't have any, any, any downside. You don't have any downside. The question over here is why you... Yes, correct. That's the... This is the similarity. The reason they do it is because it makes it easier, faster. You don't have to figure out where I'm going to cut from. I already figured it out. I'm just going to put it there and go. But the question is why, why is such a minhag if you're asking like... It doesn't make it easier, like you said, it makes it harder for it to find. Well, again, bread, it's, it's not like it takes an extra part of surgery when you make an initial incision. It depends on the follow sometimes. <laughs> Rabbi, can you hear me? Right. So that's again that that is the the that's the reason behind it to kind of start the process without damaging the the lechem from being a lechem shalem. And again, nowadays it has become. Um, not really a thing to just make a mark on it. It's not even a cut. They're just to keep the minhag of what has been. And that's the, um, again, that's the, the Hasidic, the Samad Ashkenazim have the minhag. <clears throat> Why is bread special? This week? Because you said there's a machine that you would break it as you say the bracha. Well, I don't think you should mean by a sickle or anything else. Well, what's special about bread that Rukhia says, break it as while you're saying the bracha? Compared to any other food that you eat. Well, this the other foods usually usually you just you, a pickle you just bite into it. Usually that's the, the different different way of ha- having it versus bitsiata pot that you're actually um, you know you have larger larger pieces and you cut them you give it to, to people especially by hamotzi that you're giving out to the people around the table. So that's the, the way it's designed. Designed to be. That's... No. Technically, you don't even have to have half a shot chala if you, you have less than uh, less than the shiur. So says the Gemara. So says the Gemara. Mevarech va'akar kach botza itma. How you live nehem petitin veshlemin. Now we have had. This is another fascinating case. We have had. A lot of priorities. We started the priorities, right? The priorities of 
Shivat uh, Aminim, if you have one of the seven species of Eretz Yisrael, over something that's the same brachal, you have a ha'etz on apples and you, you have ha'etz on grapes. Of course, you say on grapes first because that takes precedence, right? We, we, we had an hadama versus shakol, that hadama takes precedence because it is more specific bracha. We even spoke about um, cabbage versus others because it sustains you, right? Is is masbia, is messy. We have had several different levels of precedence. What takes precedence over what? This is another one. You have a complete loaf of bread, or for that matter, a complete piece of onion, right? A whole onion. But small, let's, let's imagine for, for the sake of discussion, you have a little challah roll, personal one. And then you have one of this uh, catering three meter, uh, you know, challah that it's been cut to half, right? Which one do you say bracha'an? Which one is considered more hashuf? Does that take any precedent over anything else? Within the same thing, we would ex- you know, explaining with the brachot and then within the same bracha. And now we're saying within the same thing. Both of them are onions. Both of them are chala. But one of them is large and chashuv. The other one is whole. Does that take any chashivut? Does that have any importance? Halachically speaking, says the Gemara. It, it was said in the beginning. petitin v'shlemin. They brought in front of them petitin that means their piece, their halves, they're not whole. But should I mean they're complete? You have two options. You say bracha on the large halves that are more chashuv, and you poter the shalim, right? So imagine. In your mind, the, the hala example that we gave, this massive, large, nice, beautiful hala, so it's not complete. So what? You say bracha on, on, the, on the bigger one, that's more hashuv, and you poter the small rolls of hala. That's what he says, Rafu, right? Rabbi Yochanan says, absolutely not. He says, shlema mitzvah minamu. Even if it's small, if it's complete, it is more hashuv, it's more important, and therefore it's mitzvah mina mufchar, is the pr- preferred mitzvah to say bracha an shalim. So even though that the other one is more hashuv, the other one is bigger, nicer, still say the bracha an shalim. But everyone agrees with the following that if the category of the ingredients is um, more categorically different and more important than even the half one, even the incomplete one, would take precedence over the other one that is shalim. In other words, if you have a half a roll of lechem chitim, of wheat flour, bread, we mentioned before that wheat and barley, in the town of Chazal, barley was a very, very low quality bread. Right, barley was machal It's considered they usually fed their animals with barley, right? So barley bread was considered a very low quality bread. So if you have a whole chala barley bread, and then you have a little half a chala from wheat bread, which one do you say? First is the gemara. Prutzash our prutzash al chitin. If you have a half half a chala, which is chitin. And you have a complete chala that's lechem seorim from barley. Nobody argues on that one. You say bracha on prusa shel chitin who poter et hashlema shel seorim, and you you poter the the complete one from seorim. The precedence of the process, or the people. It's it's subjective. Is it subjective? It is subjective. But it's not based on the, the order of... Well, not necessarily. No. Mm-hmm. It, it has to do with that as well. Because as Eres Chitaus Ora, it does have to do with that, but it was considered, as we mentioned before, the flower of Sorim was Kashel Kukaini, right? Kukiani, the Gibara said he had, he had he, he, he created worms in, 
and so on, it was considered a very low quality in a place of bread. The barley would be more than wheat, and it would be with it. It's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, completely subjective because you're making a good point. You're saying, well, you have Chitaus Ora, and Chita is mentioned first. It does have a precedent in Hashibut in that, in that way. But, um, and the Gemara, the Gemara is not just saying the subjective. The Gemara is saying the, 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 the reason the Minhag was that is because it's bad for you. Mm. So it is, it is an objective reality that Gemara is trying to, to, to project here. So it's not, I'm not sure if it would be completely subjective in that way. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll have to get to 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 discussing the details of that later, even if we get to that. Because because nowadays you have a lot of a lot of other other things that are mixed and are considered not a good quality necessarily, but they are what you want to eat, not because you love it, but because um, your wife would divorce you if you don't lose fifty more pounds. So that becomes a question: Is is that? It's not because the quality is because uh, you know for health reasons I have to have a Zikul bread, right? And that becomes a question whether or not that's considered quality or it's just that my diet dictates that I have to eat it. It's not a simple question. So says the Gemara. In other words, it would be it, it would be not even a question if it was if it was not because of the fact that you're not going to be eating the other ones necessarily, it wouldn't even be a question. But this is my pot. This is my this is my bread. So maybe my reality right now should trump the fact that I have um, really subjectively and objectively, I would love to eat this um, this other piece of white nice bread, but I can't eat it because of whatever reason it is, health reasons or or di dietary reasons that that I have, does that make it that now this is my uh, my bread, right? You have the same halakha for someone that's like uh, diabetic and has to eat matzah, for instance, right? There's a whole machloket, what Sfaradim's minhag have been on matzah. Shkazim make hamotzi on matzah during the year as well. Sfaradim, the minhag, the maran, maran chida rice, the minhag has been to make mezonot on it. Now, imagine if somebody has um, a medical reason why they, they're not going to have regular loaves of bread, and they eat matzah, and that becomes their bread. This is my bread. So does that change the, the subjective reality of my life? Does that change it that now for me, this is my bread, and therefore it should be hamotzi, that's something that, again, it needs more pieces of, of, uh, of information than the, um, the basics that we're doing right now. Says the Gemara. Amar Abir Miyam. Amar Abir Miyabar Abba. Ketanai, let's suggest that this should be a machloket tanai, right? And again, we go to the Mishnayot in, in Chuma, says the Gemara, Tormin batzel katan shalem, avalo chatsi batzal gadol. If you want to give Chuma, the halacha is you want to give from the best, right? You want to give from the best. So what is the best, you will ask? I could give a small onion, which is whole, but small, or I could give a half an onion that's five times bigger. So which one is more important? Of course, the bigger one is more chashuv, but there is a level of chashibut to giving something shalem. So which one do I do? Which one is preferable? But I says, if you know the answer to that, right, then we'll know which one is more chashuv to say bracha hamotziyane. So we should be able to learn from the Mishnayot in Truma for our Halakha of Hamot, says the Gemara. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, sorry, the, the, the Mishnah says, we, we give Truma from Batzel Katan Shalem, but no Chatsi Batzel Kadol. The Talakama holds, you, get, you better give the Shalem that's small and not the big one that is half. Rabbi Yehuda says, no. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Loki ela chatzit batzal gadol. says, you give the more chashuv one. You give the bigger one, because that has more uh, chashivut. 
versus this small one. So you see, Machlok it's Harakama on Rabbi Yehuda, and that the Gemara wants to learn from. That based on that, the same Machlok Tanaim should apply over here. Also, Rabbi Yehuda will tell you make the Hamosi and the massive Chala that is half, and uh, Rabbi that's that, that would be um, that would be. Rabbi Yehuda and Chachamim will tell you no, make it on the Shalem. Better to make on Shalem that's small than to make it on the whole on, on, on the massive one that is half. Says the Gemara. My love, Why wouldn't we say that Rabbi Yehuda and Chachamim in the Mishnayot in Teruma? That's exactly what you're arguing about. The more savar chashuv adif, the more savar Shalem adif. Rabbanan hold. Uh, the Shalem is Adif, and Rabbi Yehuda holds that Hashuv Adif, right? Rabbi Yehuda would tell you, give the big one because that's more Hashuv. Rabbi Yehuda would give, give the whole one because that's more Hashuv. So says the Gemara, no, 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 no. The first wide line, Hecha de Ika Kohen Kula Alma Lo de Hashuv Adif. Says when you have a Kohen in front of you, you want to give to the Kohen right now, right? Joe is standing right there. You want to give the truma, so everybody agrees and eat it, right? And oh, you have what shows half the crowd is kwani now. Is yeah, all the kwani are standing there. What do you give them? What do you give them? You give them hashuv according to everyone's system, because everyone, that's what that's what you, you want. You want the better one, big, nice, kizun piece of 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 onion. That's more hashuv. So what's the machloket? The machloket is the kohen is not there. Kohen is not there. You have to take the thing to a different city to go find the kohen. So if you give a half an onion, until you get to find the kohen, the onion goes bad because you already cut it. It starts absorbing everything and it becomes, you know, dehydrated. It's not good. So you give a whole one, that is maintained. The quality of it is maintained for much longer. That's where the machloket is. And even then, even then, you have a machloket. That there are those who say, give the chashu because it goes after the time that you separate it for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're showing more chashivut to the mitzvah of Teruma. Says the Gemara. If you have the coin in front of you, everybody agrees that chashu is, is more important. You don't have a Kohen. You don't have a Kohen in front of you. Any, any time that you have Kohen right in front of you, you give from the Yafe, from the Hashuv. If you don't have a Kohen, then you give from the one that could stay a longer time, could stay. Um, healthy and, and gesund for a longer time. So, of course, a whole onion stays for much, much longer time. So, therefore, if you don't have a coin, you get, we give the, from this small, whole one. Rabbi Yudah Omer, en torem el amina yafe. Rabbi Yudah says, always you give from the yafe. Always you give from the yafe because it goes after the time that you separate the terumah. says, Hashem, I'm giving you the best, right? You don't want to take not the best because it, it's not the proper mindset. So you have a coin, you don't have a coin. It's not based on the, re the recipient, it's based on you when you separate the truma. So therefore, that's the machloket. You cannot learn from there to our sugya of Hamotzi to say it's machloket Rabbi Yudah and Rabbanan. It has nothing to do with each other. Maybe everybody agrees in Mishnayot and Teruma that you, the chashuv, the bigger, is more chashuv. So says the Gemara, Yerushalayim should do in a way that is Yotzeh both of them. How do you do both of them? Says the Gemara, how do you do it? Umanu, who was this Yerushalayim that does both? Marbred Ravina, the son of Ravina. What did he do? The Marbred Ravina. He would take both of them together in his hand. He would put the 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 prutza, the, the cut one, which is bigger, together with the whole one that's smaller, and he would say the bracha on it. He would say the bracha, and then he would piece the, the from the whole one, right from the shalem. So says the Gemara. Tani Tana Chameder the Rav Nachman. The Tana learned in front of Rav Nachman. He taught Rav Nachman Yitzchak. Maniach Hamrusam to Chashmar. He said the same thing that you put both of them together and you say bracha. Umevarech 
Amale, Rav Nachman Yitzchak tells him, what's your name? He says, my name is Shalman, Shalman. So says, says the Gemara, Amale, Rav Nachman Yitzchak tells him, oh, it's in your name. Shalom is in your name. Your name is Shalom Ata V'Shelema Mishnatecha. Your name is Shalom, and your Mishnah is complete. Shesamta Shalom Ben Atalmidim. That you brought these two things together to make it happen in that way. Now the Gemara is going to now discuss that on Pesach, that's exactly what we're going to do, right? Which is our minhag. You remember, we're going to discuss this uh, next year, how on, on Pesach, we take three of the, the matzot, one of them is broken, so that's exactly our sugya, right? One of them is not whole, the other one is whole. We make hamotzi on, on, on three, and then we drop the bottom one, and we say, alakhilat matzah on the two, and the broken one, we say, the vilagaon says, you don't even have to uh, two whole ones. You only have the broken one with the top one. You have two of them that you say the whole bracha. Those are things that is fascinating sugya that Bezat Hashem we're going to discuss in the days to come. Brother, but what if you have like two, two, two of the same fruits, but one smaller but tastier, and the other one's big but doesn't have?